Hello friends, this video on biological classification part 18 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. With this let us go ahead to basidiomycetes. So what are these? They are commonly known as club fungi. They are called club fungi because of their club shaped fruiting bodies. The best example as you can see in the picture, the best example is mushroom which is edible so many of us eat mushroom so have you seen how the cap of a mushroom looks like it is like an umbrella so basically that is the reproductive structure that contains the fruiting body so because of that club shape it is known as club fungi now again let us talk about the structure of basidiomycetes before that they also inhabit soil uh, tree logs and plants Talking about structure, the mycelium is septate and branched again. So whenever the mycelium is going to be septate, it, it is generally branched. So it has a septum or cross walls. Now talking about reproduction. In asexual reproduction, no asexual spores are formed. So here, the asexual reproduction doesn't happen by spore formation. But instead of that, fragmentation is more common. But fragmentation means, I talked about different methods of asexual reproduction in fungi, right? So one of them was mycelial fragmentation. You remember? So the mycelium breaks into pieces and each of those pieces or each of those fragments are capable of giving rise to a new mycelium. So <coughs> here also, um, the spore formation method is not seen. No asexual spores are formed, but fragmentation is commonly seen as a mode of asexual reproduction. Talking about sexual mode, sexual spores are produced and they are known as basidiospores from the name basidiomycetes. They are also produced exogenously on basidium in fruiting bodies basidiocarps. So you see for ascomycetes, the spores were, the sexual spores were ascospores. The fruiting body was ascocarp. Here the sexual spores are basidiospores and the fruiting body is basidiocarp. Basidio so what is basidiocarp? It is the reproductive organ. And what is basidium? Here you see the basidiospores are produced on basidium. So what is basidium? It is nothing but the swollen terminal of the hyphae. You would have seen that hyphae is what? It is a thin hair like structure. It is a stalk like structure. But its terminal part is little swollen. So that swollen part is basidium. So now if you observe a mushroom, if you want to see it in your real life, just try to take a mushroom and if you try to observe the portion under its cap, that means somewhere here, somewhere in this portion. If you see, you will see that there are small black colored hair like structures or you can say they, they look very similar to the gills of fishes. You would have seen in fishes they have gills. So this also look very similar to that. Here you will see you'll have some black colored structures like this. Thin hair like structures. Now basically what are these? These are nothing but hyphae. So these are compact hyphae very close to each other on which basidia are formed. So basidia lie somewhere here. So that is why we say that this club shaped terminal part actually contains the reproductive structure in case of basidiomycetes. Okay, now talking about the process of sexual reproduction, again we will have the same three steps, plasmogamy, karyogamy and meiosis. So in this case what will happen? The first step is plasmogamy. So here also the first step is plasmogamy. And as we know what happens here, here two cells of different mating types will fuse together. Okay, so now when two cells will fuse together, what will be the result? The result will be a dikaryotic cell. I discussed all this, right? Dikaryotic means only the cytoplasm of the two cells will fuse. So now you, we will have one cell with one common cytoplasm, but two nuclei. So that is dikaryotic, two nuclear, two nuclear cell. So a dikaryotic cell is formed and at this stage, basically, basidium is formed. Now is the next step, that is karyogamy. So in karyogamy, what will happen? 
In karyogamy, the nuclei will now fuse together. So inside the basidium, the two fusion of the two nuclei will take place. That means this will happen in basidium. So in basidium, two nuclei will fuse together and what will be the result? The result will be a diploid zygote. So now if you compare this process with the process which I explained you for in general for any fungi. So the process remains the same for every type of fungi. And then in the third step that is meiosis. In meiosis what will happen? This zygote will undergo repeated number of divisions to give rise to the sexual spores that is basidiospores. And these basidiospores will germinate to form new mycelium or basidiocarp. New mycelium is formed means again a new basidiocarp is formed. This basidiocarp is the entire reproductive structure. So when a basidiocarp is formed, again plasmogamy will happen, basidium will be formed. In basidium, karyogamy will happen, meiosis will happen, basidiospores will be formed. Clear? So I hope you are clear with the process now. Because if you understand the concept of sexual reproduction in fungi, it, it is not at all difficult to understand it for each of these types because the basic process remains the same. Okay, let us look at some examples of basidiomycetes. The first one, obviously, mushroom, who is scientific, scientifically is also known as agaricus. Puccinia, that is the rust fungus which is generally seen on the leaves of plants. So here in this picture you can see it very clearly. You would have often seen it in your house or in your neighborhood that you know, the green leaves of the plants get some yellow patches over it. So if you observe them really closely, then you can, if you see some structures like this, then you can say that they are nothing but rust fungus. Puff balls, which look somewhat like this. Bracket fungi which is generally seen on uh, wooden log, uh, tree logs. So these are some of the examples of basidiomycetes. Now let us talk about the last category under fungi, that is deuteromycetes. So deuteromycetes are commonly known as imperfect fungi. Interesting, right? Why are they known as imperfect fungi? What is there to be perfect or imperfect in a fungi? So let us try to see what makes them popularly known as imperfect fungi. What is so imperfect in them? Now, we have divided these different categories of fungi based on two things. One is structure. However, if you see, in structure, there is not much difference. But mainly they have been grouped into different categories based on their reproductive structures. So the reproduction part plays a very important role in dividing the fungus into different categories. Now these are the group of fungi where there is no perfect reproductive stage in their life cycle. So reproductive stage itself, when reproductive stage, when I talk about reproductive stage, I'm talking about the sexual reproduction. There is no sexual reproduction which is seen in these type of fungi and due to the absence of a perfect reproductive stage, they are known as imperfect fungi. Now, earlier when the classification was not properly done, that time many species like Aspergillus were classified under this deuteromycetes. But then later when the sexual, when their sexual reproduction was observed, later it was on further studies, it was seen that uh, fungi like Aspergillus do reproduce sexually. So when that was observed, then they were moved to a separate category called Ascomycetes. So see, with time only things become better, right? So initially when scientists started dividing uh, living organisms into different groups, they faced many types of challenges. But with due course of time on more study in depth, they got to know about more and more characteristics of each living organism and they could classify them better. Okay, so let us look at their nutrition mostly they are decomposers however some of them are parasites but mostly they are decomposers talking about their structure again here also the mycelium is septate and branched so if you look at it 
only phycomycetins, the first category which we talked about, only they have aseptic mycelium and xenocytic mycelium. Other than that, all other categories of fungi have a branched and septic mycelium. Talking about their reproduction, when we talk about asexual mode, they give asexual spores called conidia. Talking about sexual mode, there is no sexual mode of reproduction yet. And that is a very, very important thing to note about deuteromycetes. So looking at some examples as would be trichoderma, alternaria and coletotrichum. So, so if you look at this coletotrichum, you would find it similar to what you can observe in the plants. So these are some of the examples of deuteromycetes. So with this, I think I discussed all the four categories of fungi. So let us have a quick comparison of the fungi groups which we talked about just now. So here it is. So let us look at their common names. Commonly, phycomycetes are known as conjugation fungi. Ascomycetes are known as sac fungi because of the presence of the sac-like structures. And why phycomycetes are known as conjugation fungi? Because of their mode of reproduction. So if you look at uh, the phycomycetes, what kind of reproduction do they have? So in phycomycetes, we saw that the fusion of two different mating types take place. So basically conjugation takes place and that is why they are known as conjugation fungi. Basidiomycetes because of their club shaped reproductive organ they are called club fungi. Deuteromycetes due to absence of a perfect reproductive stage they are called imperfect fungi. Talking about mycelium it is aseptic and xenocytic in phycomycetes other than that rest all of them have septic and branched mycelium. Asexual reproduction in phycomycetes, it happens by spores. Ascomycetes also by spores. Basidiomycetes, spore formation is not seen. So there are no asexual spores produced. Instead, it happens by fragmentation. Deuteromycetes, again, spores are produced. Which, what is, what is the name that is given to the asexual spores which are produced in each of them? For phycomycetes, it is zoospores or aplanospores. Ascomycetes, conidia. Basidiomycetes, no spores are produced, so it is not applicable. Deuteromycetes conidia. Sexual reproduction is seen in all of them except deuteromycetes. And what are their reproductive organs? In uh, phycomycetes, it, it is the zygospores which are produced. In ascomycetes, ascocarp is the fruiting body and the spores are ascospores. In basidiomycetes, basidiocarp is the fruiting body and basidiospores are the sexual spores. So with this, uh, I end my discussion on fungi. So we could cover three kingdoms, monera, protista and fungi. And I hope that you, have, you understood one basic thing that as we are going ahead, as we are going higher to each higher level of kingdom, the complexity of the organisms are also increasing. So now we are left with two more kingdoms. One is plantae and the other one is animalia. Now talking about these two kingdoms, they are really, really vast. Inside plantae, we have so many different groups to be studied. And similar is the case with animalia. So what are we going to do is, we will dedicate the, our next lesson on kingdom plantae and we will dedicate our next to next lesson on kingdom animalia. Right? So that would be our agenda. So we are not going to talk about plantae and animalia in this lesson. So then what are we going to study next? So now we are going to study about some organisms which have not been included in any of these five kingdoms. Now let us see who are they and why have they been rejected or why have they been neglected. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.